Hey, Sabaya, what's going on? Rob hey. here. Rob is a podcast. How you doing, Sabaya? I'm doing better now. <laughs> yes. I mean, I know it's the anticipation and, of course, like the draft stuff. I haven't been privy, privy to that before now. And it's so kind of like, it's so anxiety ridden, you know, you're meeting fans and people are saying like, oh, you know, you're my winner pick and da da da. And you're like, oh man, but you know, it's going to be great TV. So you're happy about yeah. that. But at the same time in the back of your mind, you're just like, oh my God. Yeah. Well, Sabaya, <laughs> you know, you were my winner pick on the season. I stand by it. I think that I you were a great player at the game. I think you got unlucky with the tribe that you were on, but I think if you started on uh, Bello or Reba, I think you'd be right there in the middle of this thing. And so I have no regrets. Thank you so much for saying that. Honestly, yeah, it was just like I was Charlie Brown with the football out there, you know, and it, it, I just kept kicking and kept falling on my back. You know, we just couldn't really get solid momentum. And I mean, if you played any sport, which Survivor, I like to liken it to that. You know me, Sabaya. It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's all about momentum. You know, if you can just get that stiff and get the defense on their heels, which we thought we had, you know, winning that reward challenge, you might be able to kind of meander your way to the end and oh man it was just it was so amazing to watch it unfold <laughs> okay so Sabaya I've been taking a look at your timeline uh, this morning here on uh to the Twitter and yeah. I, I just want to get from you that uh it tell me if I'm interpreting this wrong I feel like that uh what uh it seems like that you you have uh are implying that hey you didn't so much turn on Caleb as much as Caleb had already been working with Emily is that how you saw it in the real time that Caleb already was working with Emily well yeah because okay the only reason we go to that you know it's a clip of course as you know they they chop everything up but that conversation was Hey, let's get Caleb. Let's bring Emily in. It wasn't that quick. It was, well, Sean, like, why is, you know, that was the first time he had been gone, you know? So we get to talk a little bit more freely between the two of us. And he's, we're like, why is he spending so much time with her? Is that bad? Or is he trying to just make sure that she's comfortable? Because that's also a game too, you know, you lead someone to the slaughter, you, you know, pat their back on the way, and then, you know, the chop. So mm -hmm. is it that or is he turning on us? So we were kind of like back and forth about it. But once we start, once he comes back from the Reba raid and he has all of that information and it was so easy for him to get all of Reba alone one-on-one, one-on-one, -on -one? Mm -hmm. are you kidding me? And he had given the, the advantage and everything, which we, I don't think he told us about that right away. You know, and so I'm like thinking, okay, Caleb is a lot bigger of a threat than I even thought. And I thought I'm the biggest threat on the beach, but it was Caleb to me, you know, and but it's hard when you're a big threat. It's hard to sell another big threat to somebody else who's looking at you like you're the big threat, which we saw with Emily, you know, and, you know, we'll see if she ends up, you know, regretting it or whatever. But at the time, Caleb had the most information. Caleb was in the best seat in our tribe. And ultimately, he was killing the challenges. I mean, he damn near won the reward challenge yeah. by himself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, how are they not seeing this? How is she not seeing this? Because I am have a front row seat, and it's good. And good in the beginning of the game is bad. You know, up until then, I had found an idol that I can't use. I hadn't voted the entire game. You know, the only thing that I had really been good at was camp life. So I'm not thinking that, oh, Sabai is this huge threat. I mean, of course, personality is personality, you know, but I didn't know how much that was going to weigh in the cement of my demise, you know? Yeah, talk me through, okay, with this wax idol, okay, so you've had it for two tribal councils and you decide, okay, this is the one that you're going to melt the wax. What, why this tribal council as opposed to the previous one? It it was both. So that's another thing that got cut. So I was going to burn it in my torch, but wax is a liquid to an extent, you know? So once it melts, it puts out that fire. So 
that was a no. You'd be voted out you, if your torch exactly. goes out. Yeah, <laughs> you can't uh, you can't put your torch out, you know, in tribal council. So I saw that, you know, on the timeline, people are, you know, coming up with their ideas. And that was definitely a thought, you know, dropping mm. in my torch, we're walking. It has time to sit back there and bake. But there was no guarantee that that fire was going to light the entire time. Yeah. Secondly, there are multiple fires all around, but they're not big fires. You know, the temperature is questionable. You know, like you don't know. Is it going to be enough? And I needed it to be enough. And I needed it to be in a place where I could put it in and then get it out. You know, I didn't want to have a you know, situation where I'm risking myself getting burned. Like, I don't you can see that my hands are like bandaged. I had already yeah. cut myself on bamboo. I mean, I sl that's another thing that didn't make. I sliced my hand open. It was leaking. I had to put it in the water on the ocean. So. Having all of that in mind, you know, I tried to burn it up in the booth. Those flames, they weren't big enough. So it was definitely, I had it in my sleeve of my hoodie, like mm -hmm. just trying to see, you know, will this work? Will this work? And it wouldn't. And so by the time I had failed, trouble is over. We're Brandon's out and we're walking back to camp fireless, you know, so it, it's just kind of one of those things. It's so on the fly. It's so random. We've never seen it before. So there is no precedent. You know, I'm the first to yeah. ever have that situation on the island. So I wish that I wasn't, but it, it was, it is what it is. So by know? how long did it take to melt the wax? I would say a solid like 20, 25 minutes. Okay. It, yeah. was, it was there for Keep a Keep that long conversation time. going, stretch things out. Literally. At one point, Jeff is just like, can we just all take this in? Like, this is really crazy. And we're just sitting there like laughing because it was like, okay, I knew I had to get it in quick. So you saw, as soon as I walked up, I'm like, eat, you know? And then he starts talking and doing his thing. I'm doing, you know, my thing with the, the stuff. But there was a point where you could kind of see the tube and I knew that that was going to be a good spot and I just let it go. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it, it took maybe like, a good 20 minutes for it to go through. Yeah. Okay, so then you get the tube out, okay? And a good good presence of mind to have Sean standing there to dump the water <laughs> out, very safe, uh, handled it great. Yeah. And then so, so you go into the booth and then you read the paper, which I thought was such great television that you're like talking it through as you're standing yeah. there in the booth. Yeah. And we got to like get inside what you were thinking there. So can right. you just, can you just walk us through that decision? And and do you look back at all and say, you know what? I shouldn't have risked my vote in that spot. You know, I didn't even want to open it, mm -hmm. to be honest. I wanted, because in my mind, I have my vote back. I'm voting Caleb. Emily's voting Caleb. And Sean is voting Caleb. I'm going home to read this item. I had to read it because of the nature of the idol. You know, that's one, you know, people step in, you have to read it because it's only good for one tribal. We're at tribal. Yeah. So that's kind of like, you know, took me off guard. You know, why do I have to read it right now? I open it, I find out it's all these multi steps and everything like that. So up until then, I hadn't needed a vote. So, and I know that's something that's like, what? Like a vote is the most important thing that you have. But I've been to two tribal councils without one, and <laughs> yeah, I'm still here, you know. So in my mind, I'm like, am I right? Because if I'm right, I really don't need to vote. If we have Emily, and I know I have Sean, it's Caleb with or without my vote. It would just kind of put more, you know, cement on the grave. Um, so I'm playing it out. I'm hoping that I had did done enough work, which I talked to Emily more than more times than that one time. Um, and we were supposed to be good, you know, and actually to play Caleb even harder, something that wasn't shown is Emily gave me my shot in the, her shot in the dark again Yeah. to cement that she thought that it was going to, I mean, they are, they are good. She thought that Caleb was going, or she, Caleb was going home. Cause you know, that was the thing I was like, I'll tell her it's you. You tell her it's me. So Emily, beautiful player, gives me her shot in the dark on top of that. You know what I'm saying? And so you to got voted out it. with Emily's shot in the dark? No. Oh. <laughs> I gave it back. Yes. But at the end of the day, yeah, it was 
it was like a flash that I did to Caleb and he's like, but they, the whole time they know I'm mm -hmm. going home. Yeah. So it, it's just, it was a, it was an amazing moment an amazing unfurl. I mean, honestly, like if you're going to go out early in the season, everybody wants a blind side, whether you want it or not. I mean, whether you say it or not, it's kind of like that unspeakable survivor respect is you want a blind side. You don't want it yeah. to be like, you know, oh, everybody knows it's Sabaya. She can do nothing. And it's Sabaya, you know. So I was I was happy about that. And that was honestly on my bucket list, too. So, hey, we're good. <laughs> can we go back to the last tribal council? It seemed like that you really were pushing to vote out Emily over Brandon. Ultimately, you did cast uh, or uh, that you did. Uh, you didn't have to vote uh, or you didn't have your right. vote at, the, at that other tribal council. Would you yeah. have voted for uh, Emily in that spot? Okay. So yeah, to me, she was the biggest threat, but when you don't have a vote, when you're having the strategic conversations, you can't really put your foot down ever. You know, because it's like, okay, this is Tobias' opinion. She can't do anything to act on it. And the only people that know that are Sean and Caleb, you know, and mm. Brandon, who is going home. So it's like, okay, I can speak my piece, but I don't have a say, really. They respect me. They love me, but I really don't have a say. And the more they kept saying Brandon, the more I'm like, okay. You're right. I can't lift Brandon at a challenge again. I can't, you know, we we do have, you know, such a egregious deficit when it comes to challenges. I mean, this it was really crazy. It was like a tribe, you know, out of hell with all of our different, you know, talents that really didn't mesh well together. Um, so ultimately I got on board, but in in the beginning. Emily, you know, she had been out for me from the gun, the jump, you know, and she was supposed to be on day one. So it's just kind of one of those things where I had no power, yeah. you know? All right. Last thing before I know you got to run. Uh, I, yeah. I see you're wearing the Sean Viver yeah! shirt. We have, haven't <laughs> talked about Sean. T just tell me a little bit about uh, Sean and your relationship with him on the island. Me and Sean are so similar, you know, both of us LGBTQ, both of us, I mean, he's a principal, both my parents are educators, they've been in school for 20 years. Um, both of us have very conservative Christian backgrounds, you know, with him being Mormon, I was raised in the Church of Christ. So there was a lot to talk about, about our stories, about growing up, you know, our coming of age stories, very similar. Um, so he was a bit of me, and we got very close. And it was very obvious, you know, Sean, because him being my number one was calculated at first, because if you look at our tribe, everybody expects it to be me and Caleb, you know, or us to be a woman alliance or something, you know, but me and Sean is kind of an unlikely duo going forward, you know, people, but the chemistry was so crazy that it became more of a threat. And Caleb, you know, seeking refuge with Emily was the result of it. But yeah, Sean, that that's my my boy, I love him so much, Sean. I love you, and um, he's honestly a gem for the Survivor community, and we we all love him. Okay, and you are too, yeah. Sabaya. So oh, so okay. nice to get to talk to you, and hopefully, you know, I get to see you uh, sometime soon. And just uh, you know, it, it was such a exciting uh, ride uh, in the season. So all the best to you outside the show. Thank you so, so much, Rob. I really okay. appreciate it. Bye-bye. All right, so bye. talk to you soon. Bye. All right, everybody, let's get into some This Week in Survivor history. We just got done talking to Sabaya, and now let's bring in Jordan Kalish. Jordan, how are you? Uh, I'm doing well. Amazing episode last night, and we're, we're I, I am actually saying that uh, I have seen the episode because we are recording on Thursday, which which is not usual for us. And and I got to say, I, we I should make it usual. I like it. I, I like it. I like knowing what happened uh, in the episode before we actually record. And if you told me before the episode that Sabaya would be at the beginning of this podcast, I would have said you were crazy because I did not see that coming at all. Yeah. Okay. It's been a fun season and uh, maybe one that maybe in the future we'll have a lot to talk about here on and This Week in Survivor History. I think it will be. It was it was a historic episode and so, and so much fun. And Rob, I know Sabaya was your winner's pick. Are you having Sabaya's remorse? 
to buy his from Mars is good. Yeah, I really, you know, I have to just go back. It's like my draft of like when I, I draft like a, a bust in like my fantasy football. And I, I, my process was good. You know, maybe I think the thing I would take away is that if like we kind of did ID, okay, this tribe is going to go to a lot of tribal councils. So maybe I think that the takeaway should be, Okay, even if you have a, you know, because I went right to Sabaya. I thought this is the person I feel the strongest about. But we kind of knew that she was on kind of a train wreck tribe from mm. before the merge. So maybe it's almost like a fantasy team where it's like uh, the game script is going to get away from her. Mm. Uh, this is going to be, you know, you're drafting a running back, but the team's going to be down a lot. So I think that maybe uh, go with somebody who you think is going to be on the better tribe. Yeah, and I, I think that uh, you have uh, Caleb, Caleb and Emily are uh, vulturing her her touchdowns now, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, but, you know, then the other thing is, you know, the, the Matt Singh of it all, but, you know, it wasn't like that Ricard or Shan went on to win uh, after they came out of their tribe. So I think that maybe could be some good note uh, for me uh, when I go to draft in uh, Survivor 46. All right, mm -hmm. Jordan. But that's like, that's the future. That's the, this week in Survivor future. Ooh, that would be an interesting podcast. How would that even work? I don't know. You come up with it. We'll do it. All right. But Jordan, all right. So if people have never seen this before, because we're putting this on the back of the exit interview on the video as well. So Jordan's going to ask me some trivia questions and then I'm not going to Google anything and I'm going to uh, answer them all. Exactly. Uh, okay. It's all about knowing what happened this week in Survivor history. And the first thing that we're going to talk about, first of all, this is not a trivia question. I just have a point that needs to be made. This oh is the 18 year is, anniversary. Is this a, about Brian Cashman? Uh, about, about, well, a different Brian, a, a, a Brian Corden, because this is yeah. the 18 uh, year anniversary of Bait Blake. We had Bait Jake this season, but it's the 18 anniversary, year anniversary of Bait Blake. So congratulations wow. to... Blake Towsley, Brian Corden, everybody involved on, on Survivor Guatemala. So we're not going to talk about it, but I, I am going to talk about it. So, okay. okay, here's the first actual trivia game. Survivor Africa premiered 22 years ago uh, yesterday. Wow. I know that you can name all the players from Survivor Africa. Classic season. But can you do the boot list in order? That is your job right now. We're listing the Survivor Africa boot oh, list. Oh, just like off the dome? And it, the it's either right Survivor It's either Africa. right or wrong. I don't care if you start with the winner. I don't care if you start with the first boot. But whatever order you go in, you got to get the right order. I think you could do this. I did this yesterday to test if I could do it. Uh, and I think you can too. Okay. All right. Let's let's try it. Okay. And then you're just going to buzz me if I get one wrong? Okay. If you get it wrong, you're done. All right. Uh Diane, that's correct, is going to be one. Uh, and then I think we go to Jesse Camacho. Jesse Camacho, we know Brandon Donlin could list the second boots, and uh, you, mm -hmm. you got the second boot correct. Yes, okay, got, got that one right. Uh, and then after Jesse Camacho, then I think we're gonna go to uh, Linda. No. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm I, I changed. Already? I changed the rules about the game. I'll give you one, one mulligan, one mulligan. It's not, it's not Linda. She was four. Oh, okay, I just gave it away. But oh, was it nice. was it Carl and then Linda? it was Do Carl then Linda. Dr. I'll give Carl. you that one mulligan because I. Sorry I, about that. Yeah, come on, Doctor Carl, then Linda, then Silas. Yes, then Lindsay. Correct. Okay, and then, um, my guy Clarence, Akiva's biggest stand, Clarence. Yes. Uh, and then after Clarence, then was it Kelly? Kelly, very famous vote. Okay. Uh, and then after Kelly was, uh, was it was it Frank? It was Brandon. Brandon. It was Brandon. Brandon went out the the vote right after okay. uh, he 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 messed up on the on the Kelly vote by by siding with the wrong side. So the the rest of it was Brandon Frank. Then we had Kim Powers, T Bird, Big Tom, Lex, Kim Johnson, Ethan. Yeah. So unfortunately, right. you do not win that game. But there's there's more uh, trivia questions for you. It's uh, I I think if I said name the Africa contestants, that's just too easy. I, yeah, uh, at this point, so. I think we could have got there. All right. So all right. Look, twenty two years. Yeah, it's been a, it's at been a some while. point, you know, the more stuff I keep putting in here, like some other stuff has to fall off. Yeah, it's it's like it's like melting the candle at, at Tribal Council. <laughs> you have to like melt some some useless knowledge out of your brain and then uh, you have to take in the survivor knowledge that re that really matters. So yeah, but I will say I think that we have some some more questions to go. I think you could recover here, Rob. I don't okay. I don't think that this is a done deal. 
because we're going to go to a season that I know you love. I know I love it. Survivor Pearl Islands. Okay. Michelle Tesaro was supposed to pretend to be bad at, gro- gro- at gross food eating so that she'd be picked by Morgan to compete in the tiebreaker round. However, she displayed how strong she was at the challenge, causing who to be chosen for Drake instead. In so the tiebreak. In the tiebreaker. Who did the tiebreaker? It was supposed to be Michelle, but she was too good. Um, was it? Uh, oh, I, have, I have multiple choice for you, by the way. Okay, I can, all right. I can give you multiple I, I, choice. I, I, yeah, I right. think you know who's on the, who's on uh, uh, who's on the Drake try. But we have a fair play: B. Sandra, C. Krista, D. Trish. I think it was Trish the Dish. It was not Trish the Dish. It was it Sandra. Sandra, oh my two time Survivor winner. Rob, what's going on? Uh, your winner pick goes out, and all of a sudden you're forgetting everything from from Survivor <laughs> history. That's Maybe right. this is why Sam said, "Don't be too mean," because he foresaw the fact that this would be a rough week for you. Mm-hmm. Were you yeah. up late last night, Rob? Not not particularly. I mean, it's a little bit ninety minute episode and everything, but it's okay. So so unfortunately, that is incorrect. So still, uh, no points on on the twist this week. But we're gonna go uh, nineteen years ago Saturday, October fourteenth, two thousand four, at the Vanuatu tribe swap. Yes, sir, and Lepevi had to choose tribe leaders. One would divvy up the tribes, and the other would choose which tribes they'd end up joining. Who were the two players chosen as leaders? <sighs> One divvied them up. The other one chose their tribe. Yeah. Um, I want to say Scout was involved. Was Scout one of the people? Scout did break up the two tribes, but who okay. chose their tribe? Which leader chose the tribe? Um, I'm going to say... I will go with Sarge. So Sarge is somebody who is uh, n- no uh, stranger to the verbal rebus because his name is Lee, and I feel like that's a common syllable. He is also the other leader uh, on Survivor Vanuatu. So yes, Sarge and Scout, the, the two leader. leaders, and you are on. Yes, the Lee, the Scout, <laughs> the, the the Sarge Lee Masters. Der. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are going to the last question before the verbal rebus. You are finally on the board. So congratulations. You get two points because that was two people. We're going to okay. go 17 years ago today from October 12th, 2006, Cook Islands. Which three I2 tribe members <laughs> accidentally found the Raro tribe while exploring their island? So they were okay. on, they were on right. I2. They, they were looking around. I don't know what they were looking for. Uh, maybe, maybe they were uh, look, yeah. looking for Drew digging in the woods. Uh, All but, right. Um, who are the three? I'm going to say, uh, is it Ozzy, Flicka, and Cowboy? Yes, the three Musketeers. They are the, th- they are the three players on the DVD cover of that season. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone remembers. Uh, well, I mean, Ozzy's. But, but yeah, Flicka and Cowboy were, were Ozzy's uh, two, two friends um, who, who would end up uh, getting voted out pretty soon after this. But yes, the three of them were, were somehow somehow uh, ended up on the Raro Beach. Uh, it was not mm-hmm. a tribe raid like we, like we saw in Survivor. Yeah, did they take a boat to get there? Or they just walked to the other side of the beach. Um, I, I think there was water involved. I don't remember if it was a boat, but they were walking. It might've been just around the Island. I'm not hundred mm-hmm. percent sure, but yeah, uh, they did find themselves there. That day. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure that I'm sure they did, but it was good. It was like, Oh, not good, but like, okay. TV. I mean, for, for, mm-hmm. for pre for pre-merge cook islands, I guess it was one of the more memorable moments. Yeah. Um, but okay. So you, so you finished strong. I, I can't say that this is a win this week because I think that's okay. uh, taking it too easy on you, but you did, you did finish strong. I think going into next week, really, I think what you should do is probably like have like, come in with like a, a this is the rules of the game you need this many points to well, win i mean i think that's and in not my just head. let it be a judgment call i i've done that in the past i prefer the judgment call i think it it, it uh mm-hmm. you know adds to more more controversy on the quiz which is what we're looking for <laughs> but i will i will say i think you had to get the the boot list plus at least uh you know if you didn't get the boot list mm. i think you would have to get the rest of the questions right so okay. uh unfortunately because of the uh, pearl islands uh it's it's not going to happen this week but Sorry about i that. think it's your first loss of the season um there's there's no they say there's no moral victories on twitch but i do think you have momentum going into uh to next week and you still get the verbal so rebus. needed. Yeah, exactly. I know. So you, you still you still get the verbal rebus though, which is uh, everybody's favorite. Um, okay, we are looking for the first name of Survivor's former casting director. Okay. Plus the first name and last initial of the guy who claimed it was nothing personal when he voted for Sheehan. The first, the first name. name the, the first name and last initial. So what what do we call this person? Okay. Okay. Minus the first name of the only Tombaki tribe member to play on All Stars. Okay. Plus Cindy got one, but the rest of her tribe did not. 
Say, uh, say this again. Cin- Cindy, uh, okay. Cindy from Guatemala got one, but the rest of her tribe did not. Okay. Plus the type of ruin featured on Survivor Guatemala. So they were playing in ancient ruins. This is the type of ruin featured on Survivor Guatemala. <laughs> So stupid. <laughs> I know. I when I wrote this one, I was like, Rob is going to hate this, but the but everyone listening is gonna love it. Okay. Is it a friend of the pod, uh Lindsay Carmine? It is Lindsay Carmine. We have Lynn Spillman, Survivor Formers casting director, plus Rob Z. Uh he voted for Xi'an and said it was nothing personal, even though it was mm-hmm. very personal. Minus there, you. There's Rob. no other way that you could get a Z in there than to pl- plus a Rob and minus a Rob. Well, I plus the Rob Z and minus the Rob C, but I didn't include the C. <laughs> I just did the first name. I think this was the more fun way to get to the Z. Uh, I, I've used Zo- Zoe Zanadakis too many times in this, Rob. I needed mm-hmm. to get I need to get Rob with uh, two B's two B's guys in here. So yeah, it was uh, Lynn plus Rob Z minus you. You were the only Tom Piki to play on All Stars. Uh, plus Car uh, Sydney got a Car famously. The rest of her tribe did not. She didn't give it to them. Mm-hmm. And then plus the type of ruin featured on Survivor Guatemala. They were Mayan ruins. So we have Lynn Z Car Mayan. A- <laughs> Okay, Lindsay Carmine uh, mm-hmm. from from uh, Sur- Survivor. Jordan, 43. you've outdone yourself once again. All I right. Know. I know. This was great. Great job by you, of Thank course. You. Uh, Jordan, I'll, I'll keep you here for us. We can end the show. Uh, let's do it. Because- no, let's, let's- Let's yeah. talk. I, I got, I got, I got 15. <laughs> no, no, I have, no, no, no. Let's dish Rob. I have 15 minutes what, until I have to go out for dish? What do you want to dish about? I don't know. Whatever. What, what, what's, uh, what's going on in the RHP? Yeah. Any world? thoughts Survivors on buddy games, fun. buddy games. Uh, what, is, that, is that like squid games? <laughs> a little bit. You'd like it. Yeah. All right. Well, we've got a lot still coming up here on Thursday. I'm going to talk with Stephen Fishback on the know-it-alls coming up on Thursday. And then I'll get to the Survivor Q&A. That's a patron-only show uh, where uh, the patrons can call in and ask their questions. We're going to be live at 7 p.m. Eastern for all of that. And then Big Brother is still going on, and we'll have our Big Brother show coming up on Thursday night, 9 p.m. We'll I'd, see rather, I'd rather watch buddy games than, than Big Brother at this point. Well, maybe Sari <laughs> could be evicted tonight. Ooh, okay. If that happens, then I'm totally, I mean, I was already out, but I'm totally out. Okay. All right. Well, I think it's, I think she's going to be safe, but uh, okay. we'll find out for sure tonight uh, when we watch Big Brother at 9 p.m. Then uh, we'll get into some more Survivor coming up as we are going to have our feedback show coming up on Monday. Claire Rafson will join me for that one. Love Claire Rafson. She's a, a, a alumni of the uh, of of the viewing parties uh, in New York, which is a lot of fun. Uh, she a lot, she's someone who a lot likes Abaya, who I wish had gotten farther on uh, on on the show. A lot of fun. Okay, Rob is a website dot com slash voicemail to get your uh, voicemail questions in for Claire coming up on Monday. Jordan, what's coming up for you? Uh, for me, well, I, I have, of course, have um, hoping the uh, the Jets could pull one out against the Eagles this Sunday, and uh, I'll I'll yeah. be back next week uh, uh, with uh, this week in Survivor history. And again, I just alluded to uh, the viewing parties in New York. Uh, I was finally back at uh, at the bar that we go to in Manhattan. If you're interested, uh, let let me know. I'll I'll tell you where we go. And uh, yeah, it's it's always a lot of fun. We sometimes even have uh, survivors will show up once in a while. Uh, podcasters, fans. It's a fun it's a fun night. And if you want to watch Survivor with friends and you're in new york city come and watch all right um and then uh we've got our own uh viewing party events coming up here rob is website.com slash events for ticket information for our shows in brea and new orleans still to uh, come of uh, this fall so be sure to check that out thank you so much for joining us hit that subscribe button if you're watching us on youtube take care of a good one